All right, we are here on Koth Bagel, and uh, it's another one of those new maps that is uh, getting some traction in the competitive scene, so people want to learn how to play it. It's a Koth map, but it plays very different from Viaduct, it plays different from Clearcut, the other Koth maps that you may have played. So let's talk about it. First and foremost, the most important things to know about Koth Bagel. Number one, the point caps incredibly fast. Compared to Viaduct, compared to Clearcut, this cap is super fast. So, as a result, the point will change hands often. You have to be very careful not to accidentally cap and delay your team's spawns when you don't want to. So be very mindful about accidentally capping, but also be mindful about trying to steal the point away from the enemy team if they're playing too passive. Be mindful of not being about not being too passive and just having them steal the point from you. So, the cap is really fast. So you've always got to keep an eye on it. It also has a lot of cover. This uh, central little thing, I don't know what you call it, cylinder, um, the tube, maybe you call it the nipple, I don't know. This thing gives you a ton of cover. Um, and so you can often just stand right here to either edge the cap or block the enemy cap because they'd have to... They'd have to peek really deep to actually hit you. So a lot of this map is going to be about healing your scout as he dances on the point to just deny cap time or to edge cap time and steal cap time. All right. So that's a huge part of this map. And then the rest of the team is kind of just trying to stop that from happening the entire time. So what does that look like? This map isn't great for aggression. Because soldiers don't have a lot of great uh, spots to land. So soldiers don't tend to just constantly bomb in all the time on this map. Like you might see on other maps. Usually soldiers are going to be a lot more spammy until they're, you know, healthy. And then do like a kind of surprise push or su surprise commitment type thing. Um, that's not to say that soldiers can't bomb this map. You know, you can bomb off this wall. Um, you can skip jump off the point, all that kind of stuff. Um, but it's a lot more spammy. Usually soldiers aren't really going to thrive playing on the point. So they're going to be staying away from the heals. There's health packs galore back here, back there, over here, down here. So soldiers are mostly going to be pretty independent for heals. That's pretty normal on Koth. Um. But uh, let's talk a little bit about what the soldiers might do. So, soldiers might hold these side lanes. This is very common. This map has three lanes. It's got the left lane, it's got the point lane, and it's got the right lane. Of course, it is uh, symmetrical, so if you push the right, that's, you know, the, the left from your perspective. It's, it's, it all matches back up. So, one tip I'll give people is to come up with a call that just means the left side house thing, this thing, from your perspective, and a call that just means the right side house from your perspective. Because obviously they're both the same room, but, like, geometry-wise, they're both the same, but you should have a unique call. My team has played around with calls, like, naming them, like, the season we played with Patty, we called this one Lefty, or sorry, Larry. We called this one Larry, and we called this one Ronnie, because L for left, right for right, or R for right. But now we've been calling it lefty and righty. Whatever rolls off the tongue. Um, unfortunately, there's no like specific geometry like details that you could easily identify. So those calls, though, are important because no matter if you're on red or blue, you can use the same calls, if that makes sense. So this would be lefty for my team. That would be righty. And then if I'm on the other team, then this becomes lefty and that becomes righty, if that makes sense. Because um, if you just call it left and right, uh, that also can get confusing with these areas and these areas. So um, I think having a specific call for these flank rooms is a good idea, if that makes sense. So going back to the point, soldiers usually kind of just sit here and hold these doorways and spam. Um, you can peek into here from the left side. You get the height advantage. It's pretty nice. Um, Damage is pretty significant if you can spam through here as well as a soldier. Um, 
Because you can hit people, you can splash the fuck out of these stairs. You can splash the concrete. And if people are trying to do this thing like I talked about where a scout's hiding here, um, you can hit some fat rockets on them right here. One thing I really like on this map is to have your demo focus more on controlling the right lane of the point so that you can force them to play on the side of the point that this soldier can hit. So that sort of synergizes well together, if that makes sense. So if your demo mostly controls the right, they might get forced to play this side. Now they're getting forced into your soldier's spam. So that can be a good, um, you know, setup to have. Then on the other side, you know, your soldiers can, uh, your other soldier can watch this. Usually we do combo like a uh, pocket over there, roamer over here. That's generally how we assign them, but you could do the opposite if you wish. Um, your roamer kind of responsible for watching this. Occasionally it's worth, whether you're on the left or the right side, to just poke and see if you have an opening. Um, just sitting here and doing nothing is not what you want. You don't just want your soldiers to be kind of standing here as a sentry necessarily. You always want to be looking for open openings and opportunities because these flank routes are actually incredible if you push them. So while it's important to watch them, it's also important to flank. If you can get behind on either side here, the flanks are insane because most of the time people are standing around here trying to fight the point like the combos. And so your flanks are golden as either from either lane because they won't see you coming. So you can get behind and hit some fat rockets on people sitting around here. Or coming from this angle, you can come around and hit some fat rockets from here. Scouts obviously can push these flanks as well. It's very common for a scout and soldier to double up on one of these sides. So say your flank scout and your roamer would patrol this side and they would get buffed and then they'd both like bust together. They'd look for something. If they can't get anything, maybe they reset. Maybe they push all the way. Maybe they cut into the point and flank. So all that can be coordinated well with your um, with your flank getting heals and then doing that. But I actually think the best way to play this with your flank scout is to have your flank scout rotating a lot. So that you're kind of keeping the enemy team guessing as to what you're going to try to push and overwhelm. If you always are pushing this lane, they can know that they just need to have someone kind of playing safe, playing passive... Because you're going to bust in and then maybe they can bait you into a trap or maybe they can, you know, meet you with heals and then just get those kills every time. But if your flank scout is a little bit more um, crafty, he rotates around. Maybe sometimes he supports the left side and pushes this. Sometimes he pushes the right side. Sometimes he plays near the point, kind of rotating around. I think that is a much more effective way to play this map as a flank scout because you'll know, just get the element of surprise a lot more often. Um... So, yeah, another thing I want to mention about soldier flanking is getting behind. Not just flanking immediately, but going all the way behind. One of my favorite plays on soldier, I generally watch this left side as a soldier, is to just jump here and then jump all the way behind. Because you can do this quickly and be unseen. You have a health pack to get, and then you can, you're just behind them in lobby. You can rocket jump up this, and often their team's going to be backing into you. I got 3k on 3k on 3k doing this because people are expecting to just be able to back up into this health pack. They're backing up from main. They've just taken a lot of damage and they just funnel into this. A soldier flank from here is insanely good. So that's what I mean by looking for those opportunities to flank. You don't just want to watch the flank. You want to push them sometimes because that will get you those big 3ks, especially the med picks. Med picks are always so important on viaduct or, or sorry, on Koth, whether it be viaduct, clear cut, bagel. Med picks are what give you the uber advantage, which buys time from the clock, which is ultimately what you're trying to kill, right? You're trying to kill the clock. So med picks win your team the round on Viaduct, or fuck, I keep saying Viaduct, on Koth more than other game types potentially. All right. So let's talk about um, some other positions. Let's see. Scouts, definitely uh, when you can, especially when you own the point, want to get control of this high ground. Um, if you don't have a winger... I don't even know if Winger will get you up there, but it's pretty easy to climb up on these ledges, get up here onto the point. Um, you could do a quick little uh, wrap through here and then jump up on the point. High ground as a scout, always important. You can dance pretty well on this height, jumping on and off. Just to intimidate the enemy, continue to block their cap time from up here. Um, 
and, you know, deny any sort of airborne aggression. So scouts should look for those opportunities to get the height. You don't always want to just be chilling down here or, you know, whatever. Um, other good spots to be in. At the start of a mid, I really like this spot on this vent. Gives you good time, uh, or sorry, good vision. You can see concrete. You can see main. By the way, we call this concrete on my team. Call this main. Call this vents. You know. We generally call this lower. Jump pad is kind of this whole area. And then we call this, like, uh, upper lobby, I guess. Um, but, uh... Yeah, so this is a good spot to start because as a scout here, you can get a lot of vision. You can s see, you know, what side are they stacking? You know, are they doubling up, putting people to the left? Are they doubling up, putting people to the right? Maybe that information you can convey to your flank players so they know where maybe they can overwhelm. Um, then, of course, uh, this roof is good. Very common for this to be stickied, so watch out for that. There are some pretty good sticky spots on this map. This corner... You know, this corner, uh, I saw a trap right here. This can kill you if you're kind of like coming wide on the point right here. Um, so traps are dangerous on this map. Other traps that are good on this curb right here, you know, above here. We'll talk about that more in a bit. Um, so be mindful of traps, especially if you're approaching the point. Um, but the more common thing a demo is going to do on this map, and you should always be watching out for this or doing it if you are the demo, um, is carpeting. This map's really good for carpeting. You can stick these stairs up and people will fight on the point and then back up a lot. Um, a lot of times what demos do is they'll shoot stickies up and then they'll just sink the stickies down on the ground. And so people that are looking here won't necessarily see the stickies flying over their head. Then they'll back up into them and get insta-gived. So that's something to be very careful of. If you're not a demo, if you are a demo, it's something you should be doing. Um, next thing we'll talk about is... Uh, Let's just say, let's talk about kind of like having Uber and pushing the point. This map, uh, it's very common in just Uber exchange right across the point. Since you have pretty good cover, you can usually pop when you're like right about here. Very important though, you say what side you're going. I've seen many, many times a team split up where one guy goes left, one guy goes right, and they both expect to get Ubered, but one of them gets dropped. So very important that you call what side of the point you're pushing when you're doing this Uber push. Um... Generally, uh, both are equally good. I mean, you, you basically are going the same distance the same way. Uh, maybe the right side is a little bit more favored just because you get more direct access to the concrete, which is a very common route to, for people to retreat, so you can chase. So that's very important. One tip I'll give you guys. I know it's very common for a demo to go on a lot of Ubers, but don't underestimate the soldier in those exchanges. I think that that has sort of fallen out of fashion, but it's something that um, should not be forgotten and should not be underestimated, the soldier exchange with the scout. Because the soldier has a lot more mo mobility, he can go behind, he can jump around to get people to get flashed, and he can also escape. So um, that's very important. And if your demo is just chilling back, he can continue to hold the point. He could take over and easily lock down these side lanes. So. Um, that, that sort of rotation with Soldier and Demo um, trading places during an Uber. I mean, you could have a different play style, right? Maybe a team likes to have their soldiers fighting near the point. I mean, you can hit some fat ammo mod directs on this point, but you're going to take a lot of damage. Whereas Demo is a little bit safer because he can play a little bit further back. You know, do what your team does best, right? I don't know your team's strengths and weaknesses, but I'm just telling you how I think it should be done. All right? Next most important thing, how do you position yourself when you're at disad, right? Because a lot of times people are going to just want to Uber in right on you. If you're a medic, you really got to be mindful of these exits. This can be a nightmare to retreat into because you got to jump over this curb and you got to go straight for this doorway. You might get caught in, you might get cut off, and then you're, you're dead because you're stuck over here. So if you're a medic, you need to be very disciplined about positioning near the exits if you're at an Uber disad. It's very easy for people to close distance on this map. So if I was a medic, I probably wouldn't want to jump off this curb. Or I'd position myself like right here. Because then I have this 90 degree corner. I can quickly turn and then I'm not going to get hit. And then I can dip out to spawn. I can jump down here, air strafe around this corner. Whatever I need to do to disappear. Um, I can even grab this health pack if I take a bit of damage. So be very mindful of that if you're a medic. 
for retreating on Uber Disad. Um, next thing I want to talk about is um, forward holding. All right. So forward holding is viable on this map. It's not quite as good as Viaduct. Nothing really is because Viaduct has those tiny doorways. This map has big doorways. Um, and it's better than Clearcut. Clearcut has um, four exits out of spawn. And uh, this map only has three. Clearcut has two very massive exits. This one has one massive exit, but two relatively big ones. So if we're forward holding, um, a very common way to do it is to have both soldiers up here top right. And then your demo trapping the lower left. Your demo can make this a nightmare to push. He can trap this doorway. He can trap like on all these little spots. He can trap on the health pack. Like he can make it really hard for anyone to get through on this side and survive. And your soldiers can do a lot of damage with their rockets in this choke point juggling people. Most important thing on this forward hold is just your soldier's health. By far the most important thing. Because if your soldiers don't both have 300, they cannot hold this. It's very difficult because they need to be able to put out fat rockets. And that means getting close to the choke. I even like having my soldiers get first contact in lobby. Peeking this far with a buff. So they can potentially blast someone right here. You know, maybe get a kill. But, you know, at least kill the enemy team's buffs and slow them down. Make it hard for them to get through here. But it's it's really simple, honestly. If you're a soldier, you just spam. Literally, like, right here. Maybe shoot this wall. Maybe shoot the ceiling. Um, you can do a lot of damage. Just stuff people right here. You also have really good vision of people crossing. So your objective here is to s prevent them from uh, getting through either of these doorways. And basically funnel them this way into your demo. That's the idea. And then, obviously, then they have to deal with traps. And then, you know... All that. You have vision to see when they rotate. So that's the forward hold basics. Uh, you'd probably have both soldiers here. Your medic can play to retreat this way, especially if you're at disad and trying to forward hold. Um, if you lose a player or if your players take a lot of damage, generally it's better to just safely retreat back to the point instead of trying to stand here when you're weak because people will bust through here and they will fight you and they'll do a lot of damage to you. And as I mentioned earlier, the spawns are very fast. The spawns are very fast when you're on offense. So people can afford to take trades. They can sack into you all they want. And it's basically, you know, no disadvantage for them. So be careful about that. Um, so then let's, let's flip the tables here. Uh, actually, one last thing I want to mention. Uh, this main area is underrated. This can be a good spot, even though it's height disad. For a soldier. A soldier can be really good in this main area. Because you hit those fat upward directs. You can even splash this ramp when people are like right here. Sometimes you'll just splash someone who's like chilling on this. You can do a lot of damage right here. And then you can quickly just turn around the corner. And maybe bait people to chase you. Uh, that kind of crossfire can be really powerful. One soldier here. One soldier here. That also allows this soldier to sort of support this side a little bit. A scout can even be good here. Um, and then you can take aggressive ubers. You know through this area as well. I like coming in this main area to take these aggressive Ubers, um, sometimes more than this side, because um, you can rocket jump through here. Whereas this one, you'd have to, uh, you'd have a little bit more trouble rocket jumping through this doorway and landing where you want. Whereas this one, it's easy to jump through because you're already inside. Um, so yeah, let's flip the tables now. If you are uh, pushing out, what do you do? Default, generally, is to come up here. Most people, they default to this side. Um, you can get good vision. You come out on to the concrete area. You can make sure the left flank is secure from here. You got health packs. Uh, so this is generally where people like to start. Um, and then they slowly will migrate their way towards you know this sort of position and then take the point. If the forward hold is in place, you can have people just sacking in to try to bust. You know, try to, like, get people through and just commit. Because even one trade on a soldier or a force, you know, anything like that is always worth it if you're on offense and you have, you know, not overtime, zero seconds on the clock. It's worth doing rather than just sitting here getting spammed. So, best thing to do, call a time, just have people bust. You can bust through left, you can bust through here. 
um, wherever. Another thing you could try is rotating people this way. Since it is wider, generally, if you sack one guy on the trap, everyone else can get through. And once your team's through, it's very hard for them to, like, commit far enough to push you out without dying. So sometimes someone just has to sack for the team's sake to get through the chokes, whether it be a soldier, a scout, whatever. Be willing to do that if you are a flank player. That's sometimes your role. You got to just get your team through the door. Once your team's through the door, then, you know, they can start setting up for the exchanges, the edging of the cap, all that kind of stuff. Um, what else can we talk about on this map? I think I covered just about everything. Um, I do encourage teams to try to be sneaky. You know, you can put your combo through here sometimes when you have add. Because a lot of times people will be like hanging around here and they won't see it coming. Um, that can be cool. What else? I've actually seen sniper be decent on this map. Uh, because a sniper can wide peek right here and get a uh, pretty good vision of the whole map. Uh, at least the whole forward hold section of the map. So a sniper can kind of break a forward hold on this map, unlike on some other maps. So don't, uh, don't be afraid to bust out the sniper, too, if you're getting too forward held. I don't think it's necessary to bust out the pyro. Um, like, it might be on Viaduct. Uh, I think it's just throw bodies at it, you know? What else is there to say? What else is there to say? I think that's kind of the overview of the map. Um, it's a lot of trading the point back and forth. It's a lot of making sure that the flanks are being watched. And it's a lot of uh, rotating heels or rotating, you know, to overwhelm one side and try and get people to get picks or get people behind. That's a lot of what this map is. Um, you kind of have three lanes that you have to manage at once, so it can be very chaotic. Um, but, yeah, that's kind of how the map works. Hopefully that uh, gave you guys some idea of the map. It's hard to, it's hard to really explain it all. Because this map has so much chaos that you're going to see a lot of crazy situations. But, um, yeah, I think that's the basics of Koth Bagel. Um, what else? What other tips can I give? Just random tips. Uh, r rolling out a spawn, this actually can be a good route to come through. Because you have pretty good vision and sight lines. Um, this can be a decent lurk spot. So, if you're rolling out a spawn, make sure to check that. Uh, spawn's quite massive, and don't forget there are two exits out of spawn. So, that side door. Often forgotten. So, in case you might be getting spawn camped or spammed, come out the side door, you'll usually be safe. Um, I can show, like, a quick, uh, jump that might be useful on Soldier. Some ramp slides and pogos. Let's see if I can hit it. You jump off this, slide up this ramp, pogo here, get to the health, and you reload on your way out. So that can be a relatively quick way to get to the front lines. Um, I imagine you could do something similar on the other side. Slide up this. Yeah, that's pretty good too. That's honestly even better because this is a lot more open. You get a little more distance. But uh, both soldiers, you know, could use either route. As a demo, um, you jump here, and then you can afford to do a second jump and get this pack on the, uh, the start of the round. Um, so, yeah. And then, this is sort of what I meant by uh, carpeting and sinking stickies. Just kind of shoot stickies behind people. You shoot the stickies up, and then you shoot a sticky down, and then it's like suddenly they're just swarmed by stickies. Something to get good at when you're playing this map. Um, there's potentially another forward hold. I'll just throw this out there real quick where a demo might trap this side. Might throw some stickies in main. And he can kind of hold this down. Spam this hard and just kill whoever comes through. And then your, uh, your heals and your scouts are trying to stuff this on this side. So both are viable. 
you know, whatever works better for your team. You could try it out. Um, any other tips for a bagel? Any other tips? Um, I think, I think that mostly covers it, to be honest. Mostly covers it. So, yeah, hopefully that helped. Good luck on Koth Bagel, everybody!